Hey everyone, we are Tony and Sonia, and after more than 20 years of teaching, we finally decided we'd had enough and it was time for some adventure. So we quit our jobs, rented out our house and sold pretty much everything we owned. And while most midlife crises end up with a sports car, we bought a narrowboat called Kimberly Joe. And along with our newest crew member, Willow, we travel all over the UK's stunning and beautiful canal network. It'd be great if you came along and joined us on the same ship, different day. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's vlog. This week there are crazy antics at the locks as low water levels cause absolute chaos. The glorious summer weather makes cruising a pleasure and I earn myself a new nickname as I'm back in the engine bay again. Yes, it's the same ship, different day. Just about to set off. Um, we're at, I can't remember where we are, I don't know. We're at Atherston. Atherston, that's it. After lock number five and yeah. down there. We was very disappointed actually. We wanted to stop. There's a sp specific spot at Atherston, but it was completely full. So we've had to drop down to here. And it's it's all right, but you can only stay here two days and it's not, it's a bit loud. Right there's by a, the A5 just behind us. Yeah, and there's a cock crawl just over cock there. Cock crawl over there and train over there. Yeah. So um, we'll be glad to move on really, I think. Yeah, I'm glad to move on. So yeah, six locks to do today. Yeah. Water levels are low. So on our pre-cruise dog walk this morning, we have noticed that the pounds after the locks that we're going to come down through are really low. And there are boats stuck up the top there. And so this is what happens if you're moored up between locks and there's a problem with the water levels. Your boat is tied to one side and will tilt as the water level drops. So I hope this boat knows. There's a boat down there, it's even worse, but he knows about it. He's just having a cup of coffee on the towpath, waiting for CRT to sort it out. Up ahead in the lock, there's, um, the boat is stuck. When we came out this morning, there was a, another boat was stuck in there. Now this is the second boat to get stuck going in the lock because the water levels are so low, they're grinding out, they're bottoming out. Bottoming out. Um, so needless to say, we're going to leave it until the water levels have been sorted out a bit more. Oh dear. Yeah, going towards Polesworth probably, isn't it? Yeah, heading towards Polesworth, but we don't know where we're going to stop yet. So that's, that's quite nice now because this bit we did in a complete rush when we first picked up the boat, we haven't really explored the Coventry Canal much. Um, so we're really looking forward to taking our time. From this point onwards, we're, we're talking to just like, just move on to the next place we've not seen. See, there's, there's a village nice, so there's some nice walks, there's interesting things to see, yeah. all that kind of stuff, so yeah. Exactly how we wanted to do it when we first got the boat, but didn't have the chance to because of lots of other things. So, why not join us? Yes, subscribe, like, comment, do oh. it now. Throwing that in early doors. Well, you know, let's change it up a bit, let's yeah. keep it fresh. Or don't, it's up to you, obviously. Anyway, <laughs> join us for the cruise. Bye. Bye. this morning so this morning um, they were very low and people were getting bottomed out but since um, we've been for our walk with the dog a couple of boats have gone down which means that the water levels have come up a little bit uh, plus I think CRT are managing the water levels with a lot of people at the top so yeah, hopefully it won't be too traumatic second lock of the day lock number seven Mid-June, it's raining, it's quite chilly. Great. So this is the pound that is really 
shallow and the lock that everyone was getting stuck in. Now several boats have gone down, so several lock loads of water have been put into this pound. But obviously, they, it goes out the, the other end when everyone's going down the locks. So I'm sticking to the middle. It's quite funny because you don't, it actually feels different when it's really shallow. I don't know why. But um, nice and steady, staying in the middle. Dark tunnel, my bridge. Ah. Um, yeah, it feels really different. Yeah, it's a bit shallow. Just taking it easy. It looks like we're in a traffic jam. Someone's just said there's a big old queue down there. Um, I think there's at least two boats in front of me. So I wait, I'm waiting on this side of the bridge. It's far too busy down there for me to be wanting to join the fray. So I'm staying here. So absolute chaos today. <laughs> As you saw earlier, the, um, the uh, pounds are all pretty much empty. So that means boats are getting ground up, ground all over the place. And then at this lock, because it's everything slowed down, there's a queue of about five boats. There's nowhere for the boats to go. So the boats are generally have been sitting in the middle of the canal over here. But then as a boat then comes out of the lock, they can't get past because it's, um, it's so shallow, there's no water to get past. So it's just getting absolutely chocolate block. Absolutely chocolate block, it's been crazy. Um, we put the, the GoPro on time lapse, so I'm sure you'll probably see a little bit of it. In the end, there were so many boats coming down, Sonia couldn't wait any longer. So she decided to slowly drift her way down the canal, hoping that by the time she got to the front, someone would have gone through the lock. At this point, you see me jump on the boat here because she's going so slowly. Every time they do anything with the lock, it just dragged her over to the side and she couldn't get away. So I just pushed her off this boat. The man there just in the end said, look, just stay next to my boat, don't worry which is what we did and then as that boat came out that one moved forward and in we went just like one of those plastic toll games when you move them all around um, but yeah we'll see so we're now we've got one boat in front of us one boat in the lock but obviously we've got boats coming the other way as well so yeah all good fun never had this before really it's the first time just very eloquently explain what's happening. Do that again, Sam. So there's a boat in there going out. Yeah. And another boat's coming in. And then they're going to go in. And there's probably another boat coming out. <laughs> and then we go in. <laughs> you got that, viewers? Yeah. Chaos. Willow's all right now. She's off the boat for a little bit. Yeah. She was getting. She had separation anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been waiting for like, a good while to go through the locks. And then the CRT bloke just turns up and he's like, "Oh, we've got this boat's got to go through." The bloke on the boat was all apologetic. He was like, I don't know why he's put me at the front. I was at the back of the line. But now the boat which was here has had to reverse back out again. And we're now waiting because this bloke from the CRT has decided to get involved. It's a lovely boat though. Beautiful boat. So yeah, he's got this old working boat. Um, he was quite happy waiting at the back of the queue, he said. that He felt bad coming up to do it. So now we've got another boat coming the other way. So we are finally in lock number eight. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> it's a little bit ticked off this morning. But we're just taking it easy. It's just been a long, it takes us about an hour and a half to do two locks, maybe two hours even by now. But yeah, we're on, our, on the move again now. But yeah, it's been quite a busy morning. Busy, busy, busy. So we're in lock number eight. looking at you. <laughs> right, so we've had more straightforward journeys. It's now raining. Uh, we've got two more locks to do, then there's a water point, and we I might. Think that was happening. 
and then they'll sand that, yeah. So we might just um, maybe get a bit of lunch at some point. I hope this pass is over. But yeah, get a boat, they said. Every time they said. <laughs> it's the middle of June! It's, it's the middle, middle of, of June. June! Happy birthday, Jack! Wow. Yeah, two more to go. So, log number 10. It's still raining, which is probably why we haven't filmed very much, because the cameras are inside. But, yeah, lovely view. Beautiful countryside around here. But needless to say, this one, log 10, was slow because we've got a broken paddle. Yay! It's been an eventful day. But the good news is, another boat has just gone in the lock down there, which means that we can leave these gates open and we'll just swap places in the town, making it just a bit quicker. Yay, it's the final lock of the day! Yay! Hurrah! Hurrah! I like logs normally because I don't have to do any work. So it's taking five hours. <laughs> it's taking a while, isn't it? <laughs> they got gates that wouldn't open properly. Paddles are broken. Hundreds of boats. There you go. CRT people getting involved. <laughs> yeah. Bloke in front of us wasn't happy, was he? No, not at all. He'd actually pretty much got his boat into the lock and then was told to kind of pull it back out again by the CRT volunteer, which is a bit. And we had all been waiting a really long time. Still, never mind, these things happen. That's about a quick lunch stop. This one's just having hers now. Well, getting choked by the two can do it. <laughs> That's the thing, it's like, you got your fire on it, it's June. But you're gonna, we're going to have to light ours today yeah. as well. Look at that. Middle of June, people. We'll be putting ours on when we stop. <laughs> Not wrong. We're going to use a night briquette. Goose, isn't it? Though, like. Someone's got a mole problem. So, an eventful cruise. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> everything that happened, everything. First of all, it was um, boats being ground. Then you got grounded, didn't you? I got grounded just before the bridge, but not too badly. But while I was waiting for some people to come out of the lock, yeah. when it was all chock-a-block. Chock-a-block oh, in the lock. Proper chock-a-block as well. And then 
we just sat. So we did about an hour at one lock at one point. Yeah, just sitting there. Um, then the water thing came off as we were doing the water set, spent, sent water everywhere. Oh yeah, the hose came out of the tank. Let's make it, it came yeah. out of the tank, just sprayed water everywhere, which means it can get in the boat, which is not we've tried to avoid. Yeah, and then we went to pull up in the morning around the corner. It wasn't really very nice. We had like a power station behind us yeah. and a building site next to that, and we were thinking, oh, I've done all this, and it's not even a nice mooring. No. And then we found a nice mooring. But no solar. No solar. But, but there's no sun anyway, so. No, we're in England. <laughs> what do you need solar for? Um, and briefly, just as we had to move the boat from the spot we didn't like to this one that we do like, what happened, Tom? The royal light came on. Yeah. So we're going to check that out before we move again. Yep. This is after me saying. Yep, ever since someone said. You got a really good engine, we yeah. have. I'm just going to show you the clip now. <laughs> We got a really good engine actually, I have to say. Oh. No, oh, I know, but. Who says things like that? I do, because every time I come <laughs> But yeah, but we're moored up now. I think we probably will be here for, I keep saying this, but I do think we're probably going to be here two or three days at the very least. Um, there's a chip shop, a pub, a butcher's, so lots Bankers, of places we can walk to. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of places to talk to, and we want to start taking our time again. So, yeah, there's hopefully some nice. nice little bits to it actually, mm. like an abbey or something, isn't there? Is there a Polesworth abbey? I don't know, it's on. I don't know, we'll have a look and see. There's an abbey national. Probably not anymore. Isn't there a Santander now? Nationwide. They're showing your age you are. <laughs> Right. Anyway, right. We're going to settle in now. We're going to get bits and pieces sorted out after yeah. the cruise today, and then see what happens next. Yeah, we're hoping a chip shop dinner. We think there's a chip shop here, and yeah. we haven't got any food, so it would be quite handy. So we're back in the engine bay again. <laughs> um, on our journey here to Polesworth, just before we moored up, the oil light came, the oil light came on. Ta da! So at least we know it works. Um, so now I'm just going in to check out. Why? Because I don't know. So there's two lights now out of four. Four. Uh, four water lights, two of them at the, the moment. <laughs> I don't think the green one works either because it's, it's on the notes we got basically when we had the survey done. The green light doesn't work, but I don't know what that means. So, yeah, so sorry, I was even worried about when the light came on, we would like moored around the corner a little bit, wouldn't we? Yeah, and the oil was dodgy. Uh, Sonia was worried about even just moving that fast. We pretty much walked it around to here in the end. Yeah. There was a rattling noise you said as well, didn't you? I thought it was very vibrating, actually. It's normally quite quiet, mm. but it felt, it sounded like there was a, something was vibrating. But I'm going to just check around and see if I can feel any leaks. There's no leaks in the, there's nothing in the bilge. There's no leak in the bilge. Yeah. So first things first, check the oil levels. Um, if the oil levels are low, the oil has gone somewhere. There we go. Oil level is fine on the max. So we're not losing any oil. So now I'm just going to check around, have a feel around, see if I can see any oil leaks, but I don't think there are any. What we might do is do a service, um, put some fresh oil in there, but the oil doesn't look too black or thin either. So I'm beginning to wonder if there's a loose connection to the control panel on the engine controls, but I'm just going to check all the pulleys on the fan belts now to make sure that they're not squeaking and um, yeah, see where we get out there. I'm going to show you how dirty these channels do get. This is the drainage channel. Um, so I'll clear that out while I'm here because that will just block up again. But yeah, we have the canopy up most of the time which protects it but this comes in off your bottom of your shoes. But yeah, you can see all the way down to there. But we'll give that a clean out while we're here. So just a quick clean up resulted in that amount of crud coming out of our channels um yeah and it's a bit dusty in there now but that should all just flow out of the hose so what are you doing at the moment i'm just this one's a bit blocked that one's really clear this one's a bit blocked so i'm just rinsing the blockage through decided to change um the skinny fan belt the one to the starter motor in the hope that it will stop this this light going off maybe that's it um it hasn't been changed in a while we've got one so you might as well just change it and see if it improves it so that's the one i'm going to change um not been changed for a while but to be able to change that one i have to take that one off and put it back on that one's new 
Uh, that's a new fan belt, so we're not going to mess around with that one. But we do have a spare one of them as well, so even if that goes kaput, we can get that done. So job number one is to do what I did the other day huh. and loosen off um, all the nuts and the fan belt here. Oh. So job one is to take off this fan belt. The big fan belt is now off. Now to get the little one off. I haven't done that before, so wish me luck. So this one looks like it's only got one nut, the adjustable nut. So I'm going to loosen that off and then hopefully um, that will work. Right, so I've loosened off the adjustable, but I can't seem to move this alternator to get the, the thingy off. So I just hope there is, I can't feel any other bolts. Um, that might be holding it in place. So I'm just going to get the crowbar and try and shift it a little bit. But yeah, it's not going, it's not going too well. <laughs> so, so it's always very difficult to do the second fan belt. Um, but we're wondering if there's maybe another bolt like there was on the other one. So she's just, there's a bolt underneath that she's found. She's going to try and loosen no, that off a little it's bit. Not, it's not a bolt. No? No. There's nowhere else to put my knee. <laughs> and the hood's on my head. <laughs> but this is like, this is what puts me off of like doing the little jobs because I'm not good enough. I don't know. <laughs> well, you are good enough, it's just you don't know I yet. don't know enough and uh, yeah, it makes it hard and then I, I think, oh God, if I'd have just left it, it'd been fine. But this is loosened off, this one. What one? This one. Right, okay. That's the adjuster bolt and I'm sure it is just an adjuster bolt that needs to be done. Oh, what are you now using? I'm already in. I just don't know why it's not moving. Right, it's moved. It's moved. I've just tightened it. <laughs> I don't want to tighten it, but it moved. So, it's good, it's good. So maybe I've loosened it off now. Out, hit with a hammer. Yeah, I can't do anything technical, but if it's brute force <laughs> and it's not going to break by using brute force, I'm the man to call. <laughs> so I'm going to take that off, take the um, skinny fan belt off, put the new one on. New one is here. Then put all the fan belts back on and then give it a test. So his new name is Scotty because he spends more time in the engine bay than Scotty ever did. <laughs> Are you ready, Scott? Ready, Mr. Spock. All right, go. Well, hopefully this might solve our light problem. But I'm looking... Yeah, we'll give it a go. So that's the comparison of the two... the two fan belts. That one looks thinner, doesn't it? Mm. But this came from Midland Chandler. It's got the right part number. But the teeth look a little bit different. Maybe a little bit worn, who knows? Hmm, right. Now if we could get that over just a little bit more, I think. So it's on. <laughs> it says, um, basically about it's a centimetre flex on the longest bit. Someone's just done it down there. Yeah, it looks about right, it's about a centimetre. If not, we'll check it and we can always do it again. But now, dun dun dun! Time to put the big one back on. That was easy when it's done. Oh my god, I'm never doing it again. It's going in a bloody garage. Come on, Scotty. <laughs> Such hard work. It's a good job you're stronger than me. <laughs> I rang RCR and he just says basically stretch it on. That's yeah. far too loose. We just wanted to make sure, didn't we, there was no bolts we were missing. Yeah, anything. because the, the our little booklet. Da -da 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 -da. It didn't tell us about the other bolt on the big alternator. No. So I thought maybe there was a hidden bolt on the small one. No, there ain't. We just said to him about the lights coming on as well, didn't he? Yeah, so basically he said it could be the fan belt or it could be the alternator's knackered. Let's hope it's just the fan belt because that's cheaper. Yeah. So let's go for the cheaper option. So we'll do the fan belt first. Yeah. If we continue to have a problem, 
then why. we'll deal with that later. That's why I married you, son. Always go for the cheaper option. Oi. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to tighten up the belt, the bolt that's down the side. Yeah. And then tighten up the two bolts on the top. And I'll start the engine. Yeah. And make sure nothing goes ping. No. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do next. Okay. And Willow's just to keep you keep saying it, Willow. Let me help. Let me help. Hey, I can do this. So you're not Star Trek, but I've never heard Scotty say to Captain Kirk, "Can you go get the tongs from the kitchen?" <laughs> What's going on, son? Oh, I just keep dropping things. So what's down there at the moment? My socket wrench. So you're getting the socket wrench and... Right, there's a socket wrench, yep, yeah, out the bottom. What else you getting? Screwdriver. And a screwdriver, that'd be harder, I think. You got it? And a screwdriver. Well done, Scotty. <laughs> Honestly, who thinks of putting them in such small spaces? <laughs> oh, I'm done. <laughs> Okay, so now for the moment of truth. Now we're going to check out the engine. Let's have a look. Okay, so nothing is pinged off. No lights have come on just yet. I'm just gonna check out um, put the batteries under some heavy load to check that the um, leisure battery alternator is um, okay. But also there's no oil light, come on. I'm just going to rev it up a little bit and see what happens. Okay, and the good news is, after all of Sonia's hard work, what's happening, Son? The lights come on again. The lights come on again, so... so it can't be the, just the fan belts. We might have to get the alternator tested. Yeah. How you so, do that, I don't know, but Sonia will know. No, I'll look it up. Yeah. I think you can, go, you can get something to measure the output, I'm not sure. But um, we'll see. The local the RCR said it was either that or the alternator. So. But you can get them refurbished, I believe. Right. Can take them and someone can refurbish. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. It might actually have to be, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and commenting. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll see you all next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks again for watching this week's vlog. If you click the box on the left, you get taken to some random YouTube recommendation video. If you click the box on the right, you go to our playlist of all our vlogs in order. If you click the circle, you get to subscribe to our channel. And remember, that is completely free.